Hi, welcome to Exploring the World Ocean. I'm Sean Chamberlain. In today's series of lectures, I'd like to talk to you about sediments. Now, most of us think of sediments as just, well, mere dirt. But in fact, sediments have an important story to tell. And it's that story that has led scientists to conclude that humans are making great changes on our planet, especially in Earth's climate. So let's talk a little bit about ocean sediments and the kind of stories that they tell about what humans are doing on Earth. First of all, let's consider why are studies of ocean sediments important? And this gets to that question of human-caused climate change. We also would like to know something about how scientists classify ocean sediments. What are the kinds of things they look for or look at when they're looking at sediments to make the kinds of conclusions and inferences about Earth's climate that they do? And what kinds of processes affect the production of sediments, how they move, and how they're deposited on the seafloor. It's a kind of complicated process and a little bit longer than previous lectures, but I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Well, first of all, what are sediments? Sediments represent, simply, the unconsolidated fragments of rocks and living matter. They're just pieces of other things. Clay, sand, mud, rocks, cobbles, bits of seashells are examples of sediments, and I'm sure you've seen these before and you have a somewhat intuitive idea of what a sediment is. But really, it includes all those different things from the very tiniest pieces of matter, or at least tiniest pieces of rocks, to large boulders that you might climb on. Because they're formed, transported, deposited by wind and water, they actually offer clues to Earth's climate. Because sediments are acted upon by water and wind and many earth processes, it's these kinds of processes that we can infer when we're studying sediments. So that's why sediments can be important. In an undisturbed column of sediments, we may see actually millions of years of geologic time. For that reason, seafloor sediments are often called the ocean's memory. Those miles and miles, or at least hundreds of thousands of feet of sediments, represent millions of years of time and all of the things that have happened during that time. The study of Earth's geologic history, including the history of the ocean, using that sedimentary record, using sediments, is called paleoceanography. It's sort of like a paleontologist's study of the deep ocean and of ocean, what's happened in the ocean over geologic time. So we'll use that word paleoceanography, kind of like Indiana Jones for the ocean. Paleoceanographers obtain sediment cores. They're really just long, narrow columns of sediments, long cylinders of sediments, and they study those different layers to, to try to learn something about where those sediments came from, how are they deposited, what are the conditions under which they were originated and deposited. A very useful principle for the study of those sediment cores is called the principle of superposition. And all that means is that the deepest sediments in a core are the oldest, and the youngest sediments in a core are the youngest. And that should make sense to you. If you throw garbage in a garbage can, the garbage at the very bottom of the garbage can is going to be the oldest garbage. The garbage at the very top of the garbage can will be the newest, newest garbage. And maybe garbage isn't a very good analogy for sediments, but it's the same kind of thing. The deeper the sediments, the further back in time we're going in a sediment core. And that's called the principle of superposition. And it's a very useful geologic principle for studying Earth's climate through the study of sediments. Here's an example of it from Figure 5.1 in your book. As you can see, the younger sediments, the younger materials are at the top, the older materials are at the bottom. But let's look what happens if we look at something like fossils in a sediment deposit. In this case, we're representing a change in the kinds of fossils that we see through the younger time, the younger geologic time, and older geologic time. Here we have these two species that lived up until a certain point, and then we find a completely different set of species. From that, we can infer that some geologic process or some climatic process changed because the fossil changed. The kinds of organisms that we see living abruptly transition to a different set of organisms. So something changed. And it's through that process of 
going through salt fossils and going through sediments and looking for these kinds of changes that we can begin to infer and learn something about Earth's 